سبحانه وتعالى يسمى فعاسي يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته أو يوفير الله سبحانه وتعالى هو بلجن الله سبحانه وتعالى فير الله as he should be feared as he should be feared so how is that how fear Allah in many other verses Allah says ربكم, it's uh, fear your Lord but here Allah says as he should be feared and as he deserves to be feared that is how those are then the questions arise here to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how is that for example is it like we, uh, we should act like someone who is uh, in a situation of miserable situation and that person is a coward so all the time he is panicking, crying, sneaking around trying to escape from harmful things or he, is, he believes that someone is attacking him or it is true someone is attacking, running after him and he is trying to escape you see that it's a level of fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do we, fear, do we fear Allah in that situation? In other words, do we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as should we fear someone who is beating up us? If someone is beating you up, you fear. So is it like that way? It is no. So how is it? Is it like a, you act like a child who is very poor? And uh, he, he has no uh, effort, he has no power to defend himself. And that child has seen a stranger person who is strong, gigantic, big, and that person is attacking him. So how that child should fear is one way. Do we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that way? It is no, again. Should we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as someone who has no experience and no uh, like tactics and strategies to defend himself and at the same time that person is weak and but he is facing a very well-founded danger which is attacking him in one way or another. Should we fear in that situation? Should we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as someone who is in a catastrophic climate difficulties in a situation where it's like a drought, there are harmful things, there's earthquake, there's so and so, those natural disasters. Like, do we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as like that person? So the question is no, again. And lastly, I would say, do we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as someone who is in so someone who is paranoid and he's in, the, he's in the state of having contempt whenever he sees something then he he feels fear and starts panicking do we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that situation all of them are no not that way and then how do we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fearing Allah the Almighty the only potent, the only person, the powerful one, the creator, the nurturer. You fear him in three ways. Like um, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala falls into three categories. These three categories are Al-Iman, Al-Islam, al -Isa. So. I hope all of you know that there are verses in the Quran that mention all the fundamentals of Islam. Fundamentals of Islam, we know. Five pillars of Islam, we know. They were also mentioned in the long hadith that uh, is called, is known as Hadith Jibril. So now I am not in a position to define that those and elements in, those, in these three categories but almost I hope everybody knows for example we take al the last one al is a component of a lot of things 
And as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam described it, is that it, it has many categories. Like iman also has many categories. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Al iman bid'at wa sab'un shu'ba." Iman is seven and above branches. It is more than seven uh, between seven and eighty branches. And Allah. لا إله إلا الله وأدناه إمادة الأذى عن الطريق. The highest one, the first and foremost, is that you bear witness that there is no God but Allah only. And the lowest one is you remove something harmful from the street, be it something that uh, could kill someone could injure somebody, be it dirty, you clean the street, public street. That is a part of the Imam. So Imam, which is in all those categories, and Ihsan has also all many categories, and all of them makes you, if you fulfill all these, then you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how can you make them short? Because there is a law that falls under each of these clusters. It is this way that first of all, you take two ways to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only two ways. Those two ways are, you go with do's and don'ts. Allah says, do this and do not do this. Just that. And before I explain that, I want to explain how generally you behave and you continue your life in all the times. It is that, first of all, we should define the word fear, fear in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is our central bond. The center of the, of the Friday, this Friday sermon is fear in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But fearing Allah, we cannot get a word that can give the, the same meaning of fearing Allah in the English language. And I believe most of the languages, we can't get a word that can describe it. But what we can do, we can combine a lot of words and bring them together. And all of them, when you bring them together, they become, they can at least see represent fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One way you can describe fearing Allah to be beautiful to Allah. You can say it is to be lawful to Allah, to honor Allah, to glorify, to respect Allah, to give unlimited, unconditional, full love. That leads you to the state called adoration and affection. You give all that to Allah, the Almighty. And then after that, you, be, you put yourself in humbleness in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That leads you to obey Allah. And when you obey Allah, then uh, obeying Allah will, show, will be seen from your actions, from your words, and from your blinds, all that. So you, this will, be, will can lead you to being, doing good deeds all the time, being virtuous, being a biased person, and having good intention. And when you have good intention, then that good intention will take you to the level of give, take, get, expect, having good expectation. Good expectation. In, so in this situation, you are in two. One, you have good intention in doing everything. And you are doing everything for the sake of Allah. Everything good you are doing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, most of us, we may think that fearing Allah and worshiping Allah is just to sit in the masjid and cry and, and start trampling and all that and weeping all the time. It is not. You can fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are still happy, laughing, running around, playing, 
and fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, if you are working, you're going to your workplace, on the way you get reward. When you are every step, you're going to get reward. As you are coming to the message, you get reward in your steps. Same thing when you are going to your work. But you should have good intention and it's a job which, which is permittable, which is uh, uh, good for you and it is Islamic way. But and your intention is that you earn money and you spend that money in permissible way, halal way, to feed your family, to feed your uh, others, to pay charity, all that. So you have all that good intention. You're going to get rewarded on your own way, going to the job, doing the job. All those hours, you have uh, rewards going to your record. Besides getting paid, so you work one hour, you get paid for one hour. And at the same time, Allah is giving you rewards. But all you need is to have good intention, making money in halal way and spending it in halal way. That's all you need. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa told us that even when a husband and wife are sleeping together in their bed, they are getting to work. Even if the husband looks at his wife in a form of, in a way that he is giving her love, and just looking at her nicely, then he is getting to work. Just that simple. When he, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said, وَفِي بُغْعِ أَحَدِكُمْ صَدَقَةً and one of you will get the rewards of like being charity and alms when he is living with his wife. Just uh, uh, like having that in your house and you are enjoying, you get that reward. Why? Because you have good intention. That good intention then is making you reward, to get rewards. And the Sahaba asked him, Ya Rasulullah, is it, how is it loaded? Somebody is just enjoying it for himself. How can, uh, he is getting again two words. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to them, what about if he enjoys in haram way? He would get a bad record there. He would get them the sin. He is committing sin by committing fornication. But then, having uh, sleeping with your wife, you get reward. That shows every action you take, it goes into either of the accounts, either the good recorded, uh, the good accounts or the bad account. Then we need Allah Subhanahu wa Taala first of all to understand that Allah, the Almighty, is uh, extremely, extremely powerful and extremely, extremely merciful and he's awesome and he's care giving us he's giving us care and he is taking care of us and doing everything good for us why? at the same time he is always with us in us and watching us we have that surveillance of us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah says in the Quran, Inna Allah kana alaykum raqeebam. Indeed, your Allah, the Almighty, has, is always in, oh, I have observation on you. He's the one who is guide, always uh, watch guiding you. And Allah says, We are closer then that person, then their own vessel is in their necks. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in that situation, He is omnipotent and omnipresent. He's able of everything and He is always there. So then you cannot turn away from Him. You cannot escape from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you try to, if you cannot turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is the next option? The other option you have is just to run to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله إنه الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. So in we said we all we need is to run to Allah سبحانه وتعالى the Almighty. Allah says in the Quran, "ففروا إلى الله." Run away to your Lord to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. How do you do that? It is that I have said very simple. It's do's and don'ts, and that is you must fulfill all the requirements that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mandated upon you. All the mandatory, you must do those things which are mandatory upon you, like five times daily prayer. It's mandatory. Fasting the month of Ramadan, mandatory. Giving charity, mandatory. Two times in a year. One is uh, their head, the other one your property. So in all that, you, you do it as much as you can. Do it to your utmost. But it is if you are weak, you can't do most of it. Say you don't have any money, you cannot pay charity. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La yukallifu Allah nafsan illa wus'aha. Laha ma kasabat wa alayha ma kasabat. So Allah will never put on your shoulder something that you, are not, you cannot afford. Something you cannot do. So you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of your level. Allah says in the Quran, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا سَبَعْتُمْ Fear Allah as much as you can. So then how do we maintain? Means when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us, Wala tamutumna illa wa antum muslimona, means you maintain being a Muslim in all throughout your life. Every single hour, every single minute, you must be a Muslim. That means you must be doing something good. And not blaming something bad, not thinking about bad, not doing any kinds of evil and negativity, but always have good intention and doing good things and saying good things. That makes you to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until death comes to you. So you preserve your Islam in the, in your, through thick and thin. You, Please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the time of peace and hardship. When you have everything is nice for you, keep worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are in difficulties, keep worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And always you have to maintain taking time to assess yourself. That's what is we can say it's a life defining life life defining moment. Take some moments to Check yourself to say what did I do last yesterday till today. You count it. So then you will make your you will keep yourself in a situation of beauty. You purify yourself and you reform your good actions and always you maintain yourself in the best manner and which and all that is based on daily monitoring and evaluation. And all those monitoring and evaluation you are doing it to yourself is will be that you look at your actions, your words, your thinking, your emotions, your planning, all of them. You have to look at them. And that would take you to the level of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Ya Allah Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he should be feared. As he deserves to be feared, then that will make you in the state of being a Muslim all the times. And you you fulfill the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which he said in this verse and another verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Wa Abu Rabbaka hatta ya 
keep worshiping your Lord until the inevitable death comes to you. You keep worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all that. But on the other way, how can we succeed in doing all that? How can we maintain it when there are so many evils around, when there are everything is corrupted and you can't trust somebody, you can uh, everything is like upside down. Now what would you do? The best way that you can maintain in this situation of being Muslim all the time is that you always you will be in the upright level of uh, of, of upright standard in all your actions, being cautious, make yourself present all the time. So when you make yourself present, that would lead you to avoid all the bad things. In that, in that case, you refrain yourself from committing all kinds of sins and crimes. And those sins and crimes, they start from personal ego. On the other way, laziness. So you become uh, lazy. When you are lazy, then you are not performing Allah's duty. You are not doing any of the Allah's commandments. Because you are too lazy, and again, if you are forgetful, if you are forgetful, then you forget to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then that can lead you not to appreciate the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, which you cannot count. Allah says in the Quran, And if you try to count the bounty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, you can never count it. You cannot record it. You cannot even understand one of them. And uh, you cannot get one of them by yourself. So then when you, but because of, out of laziness and forgetfulness, you might belittle the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, and you are looking at what other people have, have, have And you, you think you are demanding to get what others have. So then, in that case, you cannot control your ego, but your ego is controlling you. And in that situation, you become someone who is, um, who is always easy, you are susceptible to Satan. But then, it is so serious. When you reach at that level, it may take you that you fall into the kufri. The denying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you deny these bounties, you do not appreciate, you do not even recall it, and that means you are denying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is all about the meaning of kufri. And um, the other way that could cause you also to be misled is that you become like uh, hopeless, desperate, all the time you are, you are demoralized. You believe that in any way you're going to go to hellfire. So what's the point of doing good things? Because you remember what you have done in your past life. And that is also a source of satanic source. You have a chance. If you are 100 years old, and maybe one, you may die like after one day, still you have a chance. After one hour, you have a chance. So still, you keep repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembering Allah, and doing good things eh, with good intention. All that can lead you to be fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you should be feared, and being in the state of Islam until the last second of your life. So in all that, I advise myself and yourself that we should always be alert in fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by controlling our deeds and our actions, by not being forgetful. So that is the whole point. Fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is simple. Do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked you to do and do not do what He said you do not do. The haram things. Unless there is a darura, there is a no, unless you are saving life, your life or, some, or somebody's or somebody's life, in that situation you may do something which is 
unlawful, haram. But it's only to save the life. And the good things you should be doing as much as you can. It's all about that, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it is not that you keep panicking on worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not mean that you just keep crying or dressing up in a different way, having uniform and so on and so on. Oh, it's only that very simple. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَيُتَاعِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَيَنْهَى عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغْيِ يَعِدُكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ إِنْ أَصْحَابُ الصَّلَاةِ